Hi guys, it's Fred here from Hillian's Bricks and I hope you're well. So as you know, I run a Bricklink store and uh, what I've been uh, learning from having conversation with several of you guys is that you would like to see how I actually uh, upload items onto uh, Bricklink. So I use software called Brickstore and it's a free software and it's, it's very useful to, to have. So I thought uh, I've got some of these sets to part out. So I've got three of these. And uh, I'm only going to add the minifigure, but I'll show you the concept on terms of how Brick Store works and uh, just an easy, quick introduction just to the basics, just to get you up and running. Now, by no means an expert at Brick Store, so I use it to add new sets and also use it to manage uh, and update pricing to my store. So for me, that's essentially the main thing I'm using it for. So that's kind of things I'm going to cover in today's video. So this is brick store when you open it. So uh, you might not see the same thing in terms of the menu in terms of open recent files because clearly I've been opening things. But the first thing uh, you might want to do if you open it as the first time is go to extras and update the database. Uh, and this is important just to make sure you've got all the latest sets uh, in your inventory in terms of availability to part to, uh, you know, when you want to do a part to add a new set, you know, Bricklink keeps adding. Uh, part out lists uh, to new sets that get added. So you want to make sure you have the latest data set to, to work from. So if you see here on the right hand side, you've got import items. There's two things that I tend to use for uh, my um, my ways of working. So it's Bricklink set inventory. So that's when I add a new set uh, to my store. So this is what I tend to use. And then you also have the Bricklink store inventory, which is basically it pulls all your inventory from your store from Bricklink directly into this um, platform and then you can manage it offline and then you you re-update it into Bricklink after it. So this is kind of like an offline system that you you manipulate and then you have to do updates uh, and relink it back into Bricklink for it to take effect. So uh, for the first one we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at the Disney uh, castle. So I tend to say Bricklink set inventory. Now I've previously searched for it but all you need to do is you add in the number here at the top if it wasn't coming up and it will come up with the set you want. You have the quantity here at the bottom. Now, in this case, I have three sets. My condition is new. I want to include the extra parts because you know most Lego sets have extra parts, but I'm not including the instructions. So all I then do is press import and you will have noticed in the background something has happened. Uh, first thing I tend to do is click on color and I, I like to sort my things by colors because simply that tends to put everything um, you know, minifigures at the top, then stickers, and then colors alphabetically ordered. Uh, kind of, it's kind of the way I personally use it. You, you might have, you want, you might want to sort it by part number, or you might want to sort it by type. Different people have different ways of working. For me, this is the way it does. So, first thing you can see, it says 175 errors. That's purely because the price is missing. It shows we have 1,800 items um, across the three sets. So there's 600 in each one, and 175 lots. And that this would weigh just under one kilo and it's got zero pounds in it at the moment. Now, the first thing I tend to do is I select everything. So I'm on a Windows device, so press Control A, so select everything. Um, and I want to consolidate first because one thing I've done is I've added all the items, right? So what it means that the extra items, you know, sometimes you have extra pieces left over, uh, they will be added as a separate line in this uh, breakdown. So one thing I tend to, there's two ways of doing it. You can right click and press consolidate item, or you can use a shortcut. And there's also here under edit, you have the consolidate items here as well. So two ways. And what it does here, as you can see, we've got these many figures here, this trophy ones, there's six of them. And then there's three extra ones. I want this to be consolidated into a line that just shows nine, right? So I don't have to add it in twice. So and this is probably going to happen for multiple pieces. So what I tend to do is yes to all. So it does it for all the pieces. And you can already see it's reduced my lot count to 156. That means that's a lot less lots that I need to look through potentially. Now, the first part uh, you also want to check is uh, your settings. Um, I am a Bricklink store owner in the UK. So that means my currency is in GBP. And... I've been messing around with the pricing and trying to understand how Brick Store kind of works in terms of pricing. And I've noticed it's not the same necessary links as to Bricklink as what we might see in the UK. So there is some currency factors at play. There's also API data at play. It doesn't always necessarily update at the same time. Um, so you might need to adjust a bit of the pricing. But let's just show you the first thing I do tend to check is again, go to extras, settings, 
and you want to see that this currency rating uh, wherever you are is more or less equal if not you want to press update and it will give you a more up-to-date currency so that's that's very important thing to do so for me i'm happy with that currency config uh, configuration and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to draw in the pricing uh for my items so rather than having to do all manually there's again multiple ways of doing it you can press edit go to price where's price it's here and you can press set price to guide or you can just simply press this button here now there's multiple options you can choose you can use last month's six sales or current inventory and then again you can choose you want the minimum the average quantity average or the maximum so you know we're going for last six month sales average and press ok and you can see now there's going to be a progress bar here it's quite quick because it's quite a smallish set um, the one thing I've noticed that the, the pricing on brick store I think it's a bit higher uh, than what you will see on Bricklink but there's an easy way to manipulate that and then to, to change it so it's done all this you can see now this essentially brings all the pricing in and I would say for these three sets the part out value for all three combined is £385 now the one thing I said you want to manipulate the price you want to do any adjustment to pricing it's an easy way of doing it again you can just select one item you can select multiple items holding the control key just simple you know the way you want to do it I want to for example select all of them and let's say I want to adjust my pricing downwards because I know it's overinflated you can do it percentage wise or absolute value as well it's probably best to do percentage wise if you're doing it on mass so again you can go to edit price and adjust price or simply click this button here which is adjust price and you see you can do either percentage or uh, absolute value now what I'm going to do uh, let's for this the simplicity sake I want to adjust all the pricing by 5% downwards so I'm going to reduce pricing by 5% and you see here is now says 868 for the minifigure minus 5% it brings it to 825 so just the whole calculation for you see now my overall part of that value has dropped to 365 so this is an easy quick way of adjusting the pricing now I'm doing this on a new set you can do this as well when you do your inventory download it's the same method you can select everything do a blanket the uh, update you can if you're doing an update to your store for example you can delete lines uh, you can for example I don't want this part to update um, so you can actually sort I don't want to update my use parts I don't want to update my minifigures you can sort by type remove them from this list it doesn't matter anything you can just delete it uh, because this is an offline thing anyway and then you can just update as you go along the things you want to do but let's say I want to add just a minifigure let's just put it on at a ridiculous price I'm going to put it at 15 pounds just to kind of go through the menu uh, so this is the price per unit this is the total price based on the quantity you have the comment section so this is the element that's visible to your customer so you can put any comment in there saying like okay this is um, for example not assembled or is fully assembled whatever description you want to show to your customers visible to them you can add in the comment section now the remark section is important it's where you would store uh, your items so this is not visible to your customer it's where you know your locators are in your store so for you to easily find where to pick the item from so I'm going to make something up I'm just going to write other here um, I can always adjust it afterwards uh, it kind of goes shows the category if you want to have tier pricing you can put all that in there as well and to be honest I don't really bother with any of the other stuff so this is essentially you you can all update it offline now the beauty as well with the system is you can do it for large sets you don't have to do it all at once you can just press the save button and then continue at the later stage and you can do a partial upload upload the items you want to upload then delete them from your list save the rest that you still do another date so you know you've already done a bit of it you've uploaded items you remove them from the leftover list so you still got this what you need to do so there's multiple ways of working with this but let's say I just want to upload the, the Disney minifigure now if I wanted to upload everything I would select everything but I'm not going to here on the left hand side it will show you what you've actually selected so you see I've only selected one so it doesn't show me but if I selected two it shows me this and the value what would be uploaded but I'm going to just select one and this is very important now you pay attention so you click on export and there's two functions that are very important to you so it's a brick link mass upload and the mass update now what is the difference so when you press mass upload it means you're adding items to your store so these are um, you know items that uh, your new sets that you have part of that and you want to add additional quantity to it so when you do press this it's going to add stuff to it 
Whereas mass update is when you already have the stuff in your store and you just want to, um, you know, update some pricing or you want to update some of the remarks or things like that. You don't want to do any changes. You can do this on mass as well this way. So if you press mass upload, it always that. So especially when you do your store inventory download and you want to do an update, do not press the upload because that will not be good. So I'm for this case, I want to add. So I'm going to press mass upload now. It opens automatically Bricklink. So that's the beauty of it. And one thing it has also done in the background that you might not have seen in the background, it um, also um, copies something. So it, it's done a copy of the date that we will need to do. So you will see it opens up this page. Now the top section is what we need to do because this is mass upload. And I tend to consolidate my lots. So you can consolidate. I want to update any new pricing and any new tier pricing and also any new remarks because sometimes I might have moved some items from from one location to another location because it was getting full and I need a bigger location. So I have new remarks and I wanted to overwrite the existing remarks. So that's what I do. And remember, I said it, it, it does a copy. Uh, now you just need to do a paste in this section. It's basically the XML data. So basically it copied that across. And all I need to do now is press verify file. And when I press verify file, it shows this is the stuff we want to upload. So you can check it's okay. So you see the remarks is other. This is what you're uploading, how many unit price, and this is the total. So if you have more, it show you how many items, everything totaling. And then you press upload file. So I'm just going to upload it and we'll see. Uh, it's now added to my store. So that's that done. Now, let me show you. Um, let's open another uh, window. Let's go to my items. This I just want to show 057. You see, it's in my inventory now. Now, the one thing we're going to show is go back to here and show you what the mass update function is. Let's say we just want to change it to 14 pounds. I want to update my pricing and I don't want to do this part. So I'm just going to change the pricing. So I don't want to do mass uploads because that would add another three of the items at 14 pounds on top of what I've already got. I want to use mass update. So I'm going to update this, but I don't understand why it says without a brick link lot ID. I really want to export this list. So yes. So you notice it again opens brick link, but it doesn't open the top X section for update. You go to the bottom section and all you need to do is control V or paste, whichever system you use, verify the file and it, it's got an error. So it's because a lot was not found. I think it's probably some error on my side that I have done here. So I need to check what I've done. <laughs> so uh, probably not a great example of uh, how to do this. Um, I don't know why it does that. So mass update. Why does it? The list contains items without a brick link lot ID. I have a feeling that this item is still so new lot ID. Ah, now I know what it is. Uh, what's the brick link lot ID? Is it in here? Yeah. Let's put that number in. So is this the first time I actually encountered this? So I am problem solving on on the go. Let's see if this helps. Can I edit this? It doesn't let me. So I'm going to show you the other way now. So I'm not going to update this one, but what I will do I'm going to show I'm going to download my store inventory. So you see that went quite quick. Um, it's got eight errors, but I'm going to start sorting by price, the highest price. So that will get me the, the quickest to this element. So here he is. So you see, if I wanted to do a, a download and just I'm going to select everything. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to delete that. That's how quickly you can just manipulate when you want to edit. Let's see if it's got the lot ID. It does the lot ID in there now, so that's good. That should, let's say I want to update this now to 14 pounds. Select this item. Hopefully this time it will work. We didn't get the error message. Press verify file. 
it says you wanted to do from 15 pounds to 40 pounds submit updates and that's done now the one thing i want to highlight though if you want to do an update that's across the store i would say do it in buckets of maybe like 1500 to 2000 lots at a time because it has the, the tendency to time out when you go over 2000 lots so it's a bit uh, iffy make sure you don't do too many uh, at once i would say about 2000 lots seems to be the maximum you can handle Let's just check if this price has updated and this is my inventory you see it's updated in mass so that's how you can really do it uh, quite quickly and quite efficiently you can do it across the board with multiple sets uh, or whatever you wish to do so let us know if you've got any questions or any stage of if if some of my explanations weren't very clear by all means leave a comment you know uh, below I'll, I'll look to answer it anytime uh, also i'm available on our discord server so if you're not a member of our discord server yet go and join that by all means it's completely free the description of this video shows you how to get to that but yeah i hope you enjoy this kind of content uh, we thought we'd share because you know there's always people asking for this sort of stuff but yeah we see you around next time and have a good day bye for now